a 19th century community secluded from the world, gripped by fear of mysterious creatures in the surrounding wood. Amid their strict rules, a young blind woman embarks on a journey to save the man she loves, unraveling dark secrets that challenge everything they believe. Join us as we explore the twists and turns of the village and uncover its haunting mysteries. The story unfolds in a small American village surrounded by dense forests. The villagers lead a secluded life within their boundaries, never venturing into the woods due to a terrifying monster that lurks there. This creature, part human and part animal, attacks anyone who strays into its territory, instilling fear and keeping the villagers trapped inside their protective barriers. One fateful day, tragedy strikes when a man's young son falls seriously ill with a disease that cannot be treated within the confines of the village. Desperate to save his son's life, the man faces a heart-wrenching dilemma. He cannot risk taking his son outside the village where the monster could harm them. Despite their efforts to care for the boy at home, his condition worsens, and tragically, he passes away. Overwhelmed with grief, the man sits beside his son's grave, mourning the loss of his beloved child. The pain of losing someone so young is compounded by the helplessness he feels, unable to seek medical help beyond the village borders due to the menacing presence of the monster in the forest. The man expressed his sorrow, lamenting that if only the monster didn't haunt the forest he could have taken his son out for treatment and saved him. His heartache continued as he pondered how long they would be trapped in this dreadful village. As the villagers gathered to eat together, chilling cries suddenly echoed from the jungle, sending shivers down their spots. Among them, a wild and mischievous boy named Joe. Joe laughed mockingly, claiming the cries were from the approaching monsters. His laughter echoed louder, making the villagers even more fearful, as their lives had been overshadowed by constant dread. Despite their fears, the villagers lived like a close-knit family, tending to their farm animals and sharing meals together. Every night, a man bravely guarded the village and the farmhouse, ensuring their safety. They even fed meat to wild animals and monsters, varying between chicken, goat, and cow, to satiate their hunger and prevent attacks on their village. One day, while two girls were cleaning, they discovered a striking red flower in a hidden spot, sparking curiosity and intrigue among the villagers. In the village, amidst its schools, hospitals, farms, and other facilities, a teacher headed towards the school one day only to find a group of children gathered around a dead animal. The creature was in a gruesome state, its skin completely stripped from its body, leaving the children visibly shaken and frightened. The teacher quickly ushered the children into the safety of the classroom. Trembling with fear, one of the children asked the teacher if the terrifying monster from the forest had come into the village and was responsible for killing such animals. The teacher reassured the children, explaining that it was unlikely the forest monster had ventured into the village. Instead, he suggested it was probably the work of a wild animal that had killed the stripped animal and left it there. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the village, a group of important individuals convened for a meeting with George Russell, where crucial decisions concerning the village were made. During the meeting, a doctor urgently informed everyone that while they had established small and large hospitals in the village, they lacked essential medicines. This shortage had tragically led to the death of the man's son and prevented many others from receiving necessary treatment. The doctor proposed traveling to a nearby town along the route to the jungle to procure essential medicines, which could alleviate some of the suffering and help treat the villagers. However, the villagers perceived this plan as risky and unanimously rejected it, refusing to allow the doctor to undertake the journey. Among those present at the meeting was the doctor's friend, who awaited the decision anxiously that night. While he was working, a doctor came to him and asked, Don't you ever feel like seeing the outside world beyond the village? He replied, not at all. My mother always said there are many cruel and bad people outside. We live a good life here in our village and I love it. I could never leave. The next day, all the villagers gathered in one place. Someone had killed all the village dogs and skinned them. This terrified everyone, so they called a meeting. The elders told the villagers not to be afraid. They believed it was the work of wild animals, not the monsters they feared. They said if the monsters had come to the village, they would have known because the monsters are very big. They reassured everyone that they had measures in place to detect any monster entering the village. Village. However, to ease their fear, the elders decided to check the barbed wire around the village and all the walls to ensure no monsters had broken through. But the villagers were still worried. The teacher's elder daughter goes to her father and says, Father, I want to talk to you. I love the doctor, and I want to marry him. Will you marry me to him? Her father asks, Does he love you too? She replies, I don't know because I haven't told him about my love yet. Today, I will tell him and ask him for marriage. After this, she goes to the doctor, feeling very happy. She says, I love you so much. I like you so much that I want to marry you. But the doctor breaks her heart by saying, I have no interest in marriage. I like someone else anyway. The doctor's rejection makes her very sad, and she cries a lot when she comes home. Her younger sister comforts her. That night, the doctor goes to the house of the man whose son had died. While the man is talking about his son, the doctor notices a black box there. The next morning, the eccentric boy encounters Ivy, a childhood friend, and the second daughter of their teacher. As they reminisce, a doctor approaches them. Ivy reminds the boy of their past friendship, noting his rejection of her sister's love, which left her heartbroken.
heartbroken. She reveals her sister's upcoming marriage to another man, after which she herself will likely marry. In a tender moment, the boy places a red fruit in Ivy's hand, which she hastily conceals upon noticing the doctor's scrutiny. Startled, the doctor identifies the fruit and reacts with alarm, mentioning the village's long-standing prohibition against growing red fruits due to a mysterious threat. He demands to know where the fruit came from, and the boy gestures towards the forest. The village elders convene to discuss the situation. The doctor informs them that the boy had brought the forbidden fruit from the jungle the previous day, yet the village healer had refrained from confronting him about it. After recovering from his ordeal, it became clear that the jungle was not as dangerous as feared. However, when he expressed his intention to leave the village through the jungle to procure medicine, the elders staunchly opposed his plan once again. Disheartened, he returned home and confided in his mother. She shared a poignant story from his birth. During that time, his father had ventured into the forest to buy supplies. Tragically, robbers had attacked him, robbed him of his belongings, and then cruelly took his life, leaving his body discarded by the riverbank. This tragic event illustrated the harsh realities of their world and the deep loss she had endured. Filled with concern for his safety, his mother passionately pleaded with him not to risk leaving the village. She stressed that he was her only son, her sole reason for hope, and she dreaded the thought of losing him too. In the midst of this emotional conversation, the doctor noticed a mysterious black box in their home, similar to ones he had seen in every household where a child had tragically passed away. Curious and uneasy, he asked his mother about its significance and what it contained. His mother adamantly forbade him from defying the village's principles. Undeterred the next day, the doctor ventured into the jungle with determination. His focus was on gathering the red fruit, despite sensing the distant presence of the mysterious creature watching him silently. Later that night, the doctor visited Ivy's house and confided his plans to leave the village. Ivy expressed concern for his safety and agreed that their village lacked essential facilities like medicine, which put lives at risk. She cautioned him about the dangers of leaving but also understood his desire for better resources. However, when he passionately argued about the urgent need for medicines to save lives, Ivy gently deflected the conversation, redirecting his attention to lighter matters. She shyly mentioned her elder sister's upcoming marriage and hinted that if someone liked him, they could consider him as a potential match. The following day, as the doctor's friend was assisting him, they both heard an eerie voice that seemed out of place in their surroundings. He trembled with fear at the sight of the monster, its red body and peculiar nose on its back striking terror in him. Acting swiftly, he rang the village bell to alert everyone. Upon hearing the alarm, villagers rushed to their homes, seeking safety. Despite the panic, the doctor remained rooted in place, quietly observing the approaching creature. Meanwhile, Ivy's family hurried to their basement for refuge from the monster. Instead of joining them, Ivy stayed outside, anxiously waiting for the doctor. Ignoring her family's calls to seek shelter, she refused to leave without him. As the monster neared Ivy, the doctor arrived just in time and grabbed her hand. With a quick pull, he ushered her inside his house, slamming the door shut behind them. They hid together with everyone else in the basement as the tense moments passed. Eventually, the monster departed, retreating back into the jungle. The next morning revealed a chilling sight. The monster had left a red mark on the door of the doctor's house. In response, the villagers convened a meeting to discuss the unprecedented event, pondering the implications of the monster's visit and its potential return. Now that the monster had marked their door as a warning, the village was on edge, speculating about who had ventured into the jungle and triggered its appearance. Finally, Dr. Ji Sung bravely admitted that he had gone into the jungle, though not with the intention of summoning the monster. He apologized sincerely and asked for forgiveness from the villagers. Realizing the dangers of the jungle and the repercussions of their actions, the elders forgave Dr. Ji Sung, cautioning against similar actions in the future. The village settled into a tense peace, wary of further encounters with the forest's creatures. The following day brought a moment of joy amidst the lingering unease, Ivy's elder sister's wedding. The entire village celebrated, sharing meals together and dancing joyously. They even extended the festivities to include the forest animals and monsters, offering them chicken and goat meat as a gesture of peace. During the celebration, Ivy's mother approached her, reminiscing about her own sister. Seeing Ivy and her sister together brought back memories, highlighting the bonds of family and community amidst the challenges they faced. Amidst the joy of the wedding, a chilling scream pierced the air, drawing everyone's attention outside. They discovered slaughtered animals with their bodies mysteriously missing. Fear gripped the village, prompting everyone to hurry indoors for safety. However, Dr. Ji Sung remained steadfast, sitting vigilantly outside Ivy's house. Curious, Ivy approached him, questioning why he was alone outside her home. He confessed his determination to protect her from the monster, professing his deep love and desire for her safety. Overwhelmed with emotion, Ivy reciprocated his feelings, revealing their mutual love. It became evident that Dr. Ji Sung had rejected Ivy's sister because his heart belonged to Ivy, a fact he had already shared. The following day, as news of their love spread among the villagers, it was unanimously decided that Ivy and the doctor should wed. Meanwhile, upon learning of Ivy's impending marriage to the doctor, their friend, described as the crazy girl, began to ponder
ponder her own feelings towards Ivy, realizing the depth of their friendship. She spends all her time with me, and if she gets married, she'll have to leave me. With this thought weighing heavily on his mind, he conceived a desperate plan. He went to the doctor's house under false pretenses and stabbed him in the abdomen, hoping to prevent him from marrying Ivy by ending his life. Covered in blood, he displayed his crime to the shocked villagers, who immediately recognized the severity of his actions. Panicked, they rushed to the doctor's house to find him severely injured. Another village doctor was summoned hastily, who managed to stabilize him with a basic bandage. However, the extent of the injury was grave, raising concerns about his survival. Ivy, distraught, pleaded with her father, professing her love and expressing her willingness to venture into the forest to find medicine for his recovery, even if it meant risking her life. Upon hearing Ivy's resolve to save him, her father rushed to the doctor and inquired anxiously about his condition. How is he? Is it critical? Can you save him? The doctor sighed deeply. He's lost a lot of blood. I've done what I can, but now he urgently needs medicine to survive. Spread among the villagers that Ivy intended to journey to town for medicine. Concerned voices chimed in. Have you warned her of the dangers outside our village? Ivy's father nodded solemnly. I have, but she's determined. She would give her life for him without hesitation. After some time, Ivy embarked on her journey to the town accompanied by two village girls. As they ventured into the forest, rain began to fall. Seeking shelter, they set up a tent and rested for a while. Suddenly, they heard a menacing sound, frightening them into a hasty retreat. Ivy found herself alone, trembling with fear as eerie noises echoed around her. Seeking solace, Ivy recalled her father's advice under a tree. He had once taken her to a house where she reluctantly touched what she believed to be the remains of a monstrous creature. Emerging from her reverie, Ivy's father appeared and guided her to a secluded spot where he revealed the truth. The creature was not real, it was merely a mask. In disbelief, Ivy questioned the strange sounds emanating from the jungle. Her father explained that they deliberately propagated tales of monsters to deter villagers from venturing into the forest. They even fed wild animals to create the illusion of menacing creatures coming to the village for food. Understanding the deception, Ivy was stunned. She asked why they maintained such elaborate lies. Her father explained it was to protect their community by discouraging people from entering the dangerous forest, using fabricated stories and sounds to maintain their isolation. After learning the truth from her father, Ivy continued her journey through the jungle with renewed determination. Remembering his words, she navigated through the dense vegetation, struggling but resolute. Suddenly, she stumbled into a trap set by poachers, narrowly escaping after a challenging struggle to free herself. As Ivy pressed on, a mysterious monster appeared, chasing her relentlessly. She realized the monster wasn't real, raising questions about its identity. Fearful but resourceful, Ivy found refuge behind a unique tree with sharp branches. When the monster lunged at her, she dodged and the tree's branches impaled the creature, ending its threat. Tragically, Ivy succumbed to exhaustion and injuries during the ordeal. Villagers arrived at the scene, questioning Ivy's father about why he had allowed her to defy village rules and embark on her perilous journey. Confronted with their accusations, Ivy's father finally revealed the hidden truth he had concealed for so long. Here the deep secret of the story is unveiled. It is revealed that in this village almost every family has suffered tragic losses at the hands of ruthless outsiders. Many have lost fathers to thieves, sisters to murderers, and even the injured doctor's father met a similar fate. These losses have plunged the entire village into profound sorrow and depression. Seeking solace and treatment, they gathered at a hospital where they bonded over their shared grief. It became apparent that greed for money had driven people outside the village to unimaginable cruelty. Wealthy individuals were targeted for robbery and often killed afterward. To escape this danger, the villagers decided to establish their community deep within the forest. They enacted strict rules forbidding anyone from leaving the village boundary, believing isolation was the only way to ensure their safety and protect themselves from further harm. As their children grew older and began questioning why they couldn't leave the village, the elders devised a story to keep them within its bounds. They crafted a tale about a fearsome monster lurking in the jungle outside, a creature that would devour anyone who dared venture beyond the village limits. To instill more fear, they created masks resembling the monster and produced eerie noises from the jungle. To further reinforce the illusion, they staged incidents where villagers would pretend to be attacked by the monster, and they even slaughtered village animals to simulate predatory threats. Every household possessed a mysterious black box, which held reminders of their past lives in the town they had left behind. One day, when Ivy's parents returned to their house, they discovered its dilapidated state. The floor was damaged, and the monster mask was missing. It became clear that the only threat in the jungle was not a real monster, but the disturbed boy who had taken a liking to the mask found in his own home. After narrowly escaping death from the tree that tore apart the crazy boy, Ivy emerged onto a road beyond the village wall. There, she encountered an officer and urgently explained her situation, requesting medicine for her village where many people, including herself, lived. Initially skeptical of Ivy's tale about living in a forest village, the officer eventually trusted her plea due to the urgency she conveyed. He provided the medicines she needed. Returning triumphantly to her village with the medicine, Ivy recounted 
recounted her harrowing encounter with the supposed monster and how she cleverly outwitted it to reach town and back safely. Her tale spread quickly among the villagers, who now believed in the existence of the forest monster that had attacked Ivy. Though saddened by Ivy's death, her parents found solace in knowing their son had unwittingly done a great service for the village. They reassured themselves that the fabricated tale of the monster would ensure the village's isolation and safety, preventing their children from ever questioning their existence outside the village walls. Thus, the story of this movie concluded, with the village's secrets preserved and its future secured.